Oh, look, it's my favorites. Yeah, Order Z LCD 2s. I mean, these are my first pair of what I call intimidating headphones, both in look and cost. Never mind the insane cable it comes with. I mean, you look at that connector and go, oh, that's a bit chonker. Well, I mean, it's got two of them. It's got this humongous ribboned cable that ends in a full blown big dingus. Mmm, accessible. And also, never mind how hard they squeeze your face. It's actually quite intense. But these cost 1,000 US bucks like $1,300 dues. But I mean, we're not done. I mean, you saw that big dingus end on the cable there. They're expecting you to plug these into a home amp, not a smartphone. So to get the most out of them, you know, you want something powerful to drive them. I'm spoiled. I've got Fio's M15. You want to talk headphone dongles? Yo, look at this biz here, mate. Whew. There you go, that's a dongle. Smash it in there, mate, there we go. They're open backs, meaning everyone can hear what you're listening to, so all the noise gets in. But all that for the awesome soundstage, that wide and 3D open back vibe that these give. I mean, if you wore these on a bus, someone would punch you straight in your dingus face. But also, these are not standard headphones. These are planar magnetics. You know, more standard headphones have a dynamic driver like this. It's literally one sheet of plastic with a coil and a magnet doing everything. To do the low notes, it moves really big, and it does the high notes in between them. It's insane. Well, planar magnetics are like a single piece of membrane with the tracings drawn onto it. There's no suspension around it. There's no magnet hanging off of it. It's just this thin sheet with nothing touching it to make it super lightweight. The magnets around it, it just goes meaning Oh, base extension is huge, like, and it's just tight and crispy. Mmm, boring. Base extension doesn't mean it has heaps of bass. I mean, it just gets really low. Cheap headphones can't even hear the really, really crazy low stuff. But they aren't even the ones I want to talk about. These are the ones I want to talk about. I'm very picky about what I accept from companies, but I'd only accept something if it was genuinely interesting or had some details in it where I had to try them myself. So these are Verum Ones, or Verum Ones maybe, um, and they are handmade in Ukraine by a small company, which is super neato. They look in Insane, and I adore, I love this pattern. If you're gonna have planar magnetic open backs for private home use, they might as well look as outlandish as this. I'm a big fan. Out the gates, they are so much more comfortable than the LCD2s. None of the face squeezing, and like these are sheepskin leather pads, and they're, to, they're so lovely. The crazy wedge shaped pads are to do with sound stage, so they kind of face at you more. Uh, but the Verums are dialed back just a little bit, but it's just so much more comfortable for long listening. Normally I'd be comparing these against some HD 600s, you know, with the freakish ears on a stand, but my, these have to go up against the big bars. It's gotta be head to head against these. have a little bit of extra top end but the mids and low end are so close and like honestly I've demoed these with heaps of mates like one of them are sound engineer the others being musicians at the time it takes to unplug swap the headphones rewind the track back and to go again none of them could say which one they preferred there are some differences obviously but in the grand scheme of it they loved both and I agree but let's get to the really interesting details super layman's terms here but the more ohms the more power the headphones need to drive them there are other factors like sensitivity and such and some kind of break the rules a little bit but for an example Apple dirty buds these are like 40 ohms you know anything can run these and that's their point the herd 600s these are 300 Ohm. You definitely want to be using an amp for these. The Bear Dynamic T1s, these are 600 ohms. <laughs> LCD 2s are weird. They're only about 70 ohms, but they just need heaps of power to sound good. K712s are like 60 something, and they also need a lot of power for some reason. You know, so they kind of break the strategy there of more ohms, more power. What about the Verums though? These are eight. I'm just gonna say that again. The, the Verums are 8 ohms. <laughs> Wait, 40 ohms? 
eight ohms. They said they want to make planars that smash out of a MacBook Air or even like an old iPod shuffle. And um, they do. But it's time to talk cost because these are handmade after all. The LCD2s are a thousand US bucks, but you still need to find an amp to run them. So, you know, add another 200 onto that. These don't need an amp. So to be honest, if they cost a thousand bucks while offering a very similar sound with none of the hangups or having to plug in extra equipment, you just whack it in, I'd call that a deal. These are 350 US bucks. No amp needed. I mean, are you getting the vibe on why I like these so much? They're more comfortable. They plug into anything with a headphone jack. The cable they ship is a little bit cheap, but it works. And non-proprietary, you can make your own one of these. It's the same cable the T1s use. Oh, uh, by the way, those recordings you heard just a little bit ago, the LCD2s were being played through my Hi-Fi Cambridge DAC and headphone amp. You know, it's a basic totaling of like thousands of dollars. The recording of these you were listening to, that was being smashed straight out of my MacBook Air. I didn't even make it fair for these. So if you heard both of these and went, wow, they both sound great, that was out of a MacBook Air. But the final detail that I learned that made me go, okay, wow. So I'm using them and I'm loving them and I had to get more info and I was about to start doing some Googling until I remembered they emailed me. So I might as well just ask straight to the source and I was like, what the heck? I'm not using my LCD 2s anymore because you made these insane things that play out of anything that cost less than half the price with none of the hangups or anything. I mean, look at this. Look at it. It's beautiful. I'm like, what's the deal? Where'd you guys come from? And that's when I learned there is no guys. There is no them. It's a him. It's one guy. He works in plastics manufacturing. No wonder he got this insane finish on this plastic housing. Cause yes, these are plastic. Very cleverly saving money. You know, instead of a plush leather, it's more like a rustic leather, but it's still so comfortable. Look at this to get swivel in the ear cups. Just put in a brass pin. These are hand milled titanium. These are all his design. He hand assembled these, the inventor. He's got friends in manufacturing who can make these stainless steel panels to help him source the magnets for the drivers. And it turns out he specifically designed them to take down the LCD twos. <laughs> I mean, I, I freaking love these. Just three and a half feel jack or whatever and boom, amazing sound. I love using these for mixing if I'm just rocking Logic Pro through my MacBook on the couch. You can use an amp to get even better sound, but it's just awesome that you don't need to. Your mum can just borrow these and play them out of her iPhone. I love non-intimidating audio file stuff. There is a downside to all this though. I mean, it's amazing that this is a one man operation, but it means that you gotta wait for him to build the pair for you. So you know, I bet you're interested in checking these out and I have a link in the dupe box down below, but just know that it may take a while to get a pair. I hope you get some extra business to be able to hire some extra hands to help assemble these. But if you are interested and you are worried about the weight, uh, headphones are nothing like phones and games. Right, nothing like them, they don't go out of date. My favorite pair of headphones are stacked electrostats from the 70s. Good headphones stay good. I mean, you'll be buying a handmade piece of audiophile tech that will still sound good in 20 years time. Guys, HD 600s came out in 1997. This is a pair from 1997. That's why this top ear pad piece is so worn out. He offers warranties for defects and things, but you know, just know it's got to go back to Ukraine and then there's a wait for his time. You know, welcome to one man shows. It's like my patrons waiting for a reply from me. It takes a long time to get through 300 messages. I'm so sorry. It's quite overwhelming at times. <laughs> Did an outstanding job, man. Bravo, you mad lad. <laughs> uh, although, uh, just a tip, man. Like, uh, it was just put in a box with some bubble wrap. Uh, but the boss got really kicked up. These survive perfect. Like they're, they're built like a tank, but maybe a little bit of inner structure to the box, just because you know, I guess you know, Australia is a long way from Ukraine, just to protect these beauties for future orders. But that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, because my one dollar a month I direct your videos, and you know it's already up there now. I'll give you a Nugget Realm tour because I've got all my nuggets up in the display now, where I can look at them all and go, why have I wasted all my money? So thanks so much, mate. I'll I'll see you all next time. You're so close to your hammock, Frank. You can do it. You can do it. You're almost there, Frank. Just do You're just... You're holding your body away. Just... You can get in there. You're almost...